In this video, we're gonna be talking about blood. We're gonna get into what it is and how it functions. And by the end of this series, you'll be a blood pro. Well, you'll know a bunch more about blood than you did before. So let's do it. Blood, we all have it, we all see it, like if you get a cut or something, and we all know that it's important. But what exactly is it? Well, did you know that blood is actually connective tissue? Seriously, it is. Connective tissue is a structure, it's made up of cells and some extracellular stuff, the stuff outside the cell. You put it together and voila, you have connective tissue. In this case with blood, the cells are the red blood cells, the white blood cells, and you even have some cell fragments called platelets. The extracellular stuff or the extracellular matrix is called plasma. And yes, I know, I know, it's a liquid, which makes it very different from other kinds of connective tissue. But hey, blood has to be structured differently so that it can do what it was meant to do. So let's talk about what it was meant to do. Blood has three main functions. The first one is transportation. You wanna get the good stuff to where it needs to go and you wanna get rid of the bad stuff. Let's say you just had lunch and the lunch was amazing, good for you. I mean, maybe it was curry chicken. Oh man, that, that sounds good. Wait, now I'm getting hungry. Okay, back to what I was saying. You ate some food and it was awesome. It goes through your digestive system, it gets broken down and the nutrients from the food gets absorbed on the way down your digestive tract. Awesome. But now we gotta get those nutrients to the different organs in your body. Your heart needs nutrients. Your brain needs nutrients. Your muscles, they need nutrients too. And guess how those nutrients get to all those structures? Yep, blood. Know what else everything in your body needs? Oxygen. And fortunately, you have a respiratory system. You breathe in, <gasps> your lungs take in oxygen, and that oxygen goes to the bloodstream. And yes, your blood then transports that oxygen all throughout your body because your body really needs it. The blood also transports hormones throughout the body so that they can perform all kinds of different functions. One last thing when it comes to the transportation function of the blood, yes, we want to get the good stuff to the various parts of our bodies, but we also want to get the crap out. Carbon dioxide, for example, it's produced throughout your body as a byproduct of cellular respiration. Now, you don't want all that to build up in your blood because that would change the pH of your blood and everything would just get out of whack. So the blood takes the carbon dioxide to the lungs and you breathe it out. <sighs> And when you do that, the carbon dioxide goes out into the air, it gets used by plants, it's a beautiful thing. Now, carbon dioxide is not the only one. Waste products are made all throughout your body and you gotta get rid of them somehow and that way is the blood. Yep, it takes that junk to the kidneys so that you can make pee and get that junk out into the toilet. So the first function is transportation. And as you can see, there's a whole lot of transportation that's happening in the blood. It transports nutrients to the parts of your body that needs it, as well as oxygen and hormones. And of course, it has to help get rid of the junk. So it plays a major role of transporting waste as well. The second function is protection. Listen, my kids came home the other day where they were around a bunch of germ-infested little humans. Uh, we were hanging out in the playroom, having fun. All of a sudden, my germ-infested little humans sneeze on me without even covering their mouths. The day was going so well. Now, who knows what kind of bacteria or viruses they spread to me. All hope of survival would be completely lost if I didn't have blood. Because in my blood are white blood cells, whose main functions is to fight against bacteria, viruses, and other threats to my body. Yay, blood! Thanks for protecting us from all those germ-infested little humans. So function number two, protection. Thank God. Now we have one more function to look at, but before we get there, let's do a quick check to make sure you were paying attention. I'm gonna ask you some questions, and I want you to type your answers in the comments area below. At the end of this video, I'm gonna give you the correct answers and you'll see how well you did. But you have to type your answer before continuing with the video. Hit pause, type it out, and then continue. Ready? Okay, question number one. All of the following are normal components of the blood except, is it red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, bacteria, or plasma? Hit pause, type your answer in the comments below. Let's see how well you do and then let's move on. Question number two, 
What substances are transported by the blood? Is it nutrients, excretory materials, hormones, oxygen, or all of the above? Once again, hit pause, type your answer, and let's continue. Okay, question number three is a little tricky because it's partly covered in the next section, but let's see how well you do. All of the following are main functions of the blood, except for, is it transportation of nerve cells, protection, or homeostasis? You know what to do. Can't wait to see your answers below in the comments. Just don't cheat, okay? All right, let's move on. The last function is drum roll, please. Homeostasis. Homeostasis is essentially keeping things relatively stable in the body. Here's what I mean. You go out in this hot sun on a summer day, uh, maybe you're even out for a run, you start getting hot. Now, you don't want your insides to get hot because that would be bad. Well, the blood helps with that. More blood gets routed away from your core and out to the periphery, like the skin. And of course, because it's more superficial, it's a bit cooler there. And when the blood passes by the skin, it gives off heat to the environment to try to keep things relatively stable on the inside. But if you're living in a ridiculously cold places like when we used to live in Michigan and you're outside playing in the snow because you love freezing, you're behind off for some reason, the blood then gets routed to your core to keep things a bit warmer. It also helps with homeostasis in other ways. There are other proteins and compounds in the blood that help to maintain homeostasis by regulating and kind of buffering the blood to maintain the pH inside the body. The key with all of these things is that if things get out of balance in the body or out of homeostasis, it can have a bunch of negative effects in the body. But thanks to blood, we can be okay. So, transportation, protection, and homeostasis. These are the three main functions of the blood. Now, let's see how well you did on your little test. Answer number one. The one component that's not normally in the blood is D, bacteria. If you have bacteria in your blood, that's a bad thing. It's called septicemia. Answer number two. All of those substances are transported by the blood, so the answer is E, all of the above. And lastly, while transportation is a main function of the blood, the blood doesn't transport nerve cells. That would be kind of weird. Did I trick you on that last one? <laughs> if so, you can just fight with me in the comments. <laughs> Okay, that's it for this video, but in the next video, we're gonna get into more details about what exactly is in the blood. See you over there. Peace.